Hey guys, welcome to episode 116 of CMD Towers Brews and Builds. I'm Mr. Commodore for 5, and my fellow host is the definition of cultural osmosis, Big Tuck. Hey, slugs and slugettes. Uh, great seeing you again. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow and the day after that. Uh, before you get into your personal travesty in the form of a trailer, I want to get into my personal travesty. So I woke up this morning. I had a bunch of text messages from the Yards game chat. I live in the Yards. And I was like, what is this shit about? Probably just like nonsense drunkards. So there's a reason why I'm in the chat. So it turns out there were eight cars that got broken into in our gated parking lot last night between what? the hours of noon and two in the morning. Mm-hmm. Eight. That's absurd. I was like, well, first off, the windows of the Forerunner don't break, so I'm not that worried to begin with. And second off, I mean, I don't have anything in there. I certainly don't have any magic cards, um, but I went down, checked, and I was not one of them. But there was like a bunch of weird stuff to it, right? One person got their back window shattered in. Another two got both other windows broken. Another one forgot to lock it. So mostly it was just like stuff like strewn about. But one person, their work laptop got stolen, but they went just walking around and they found it by the trash. I'm sure it's password protected and like whoever stole it's like, ah, oh, I can't do anything. Yeah, with and it they're and just like, I'm just gonna put it by the trash. So, anyways, that's my personal travesty that I went through today, but luckily nothing happened to me. So I just went back up and had another cup of coffee. Mr. Combo, before we introduce our guests, it sounds like you have some hot takes on something that just got released today. So here's the thing. Uh, I don't know if it was released today. I just saw the trailer in the last saw 24 okay. hours. And our esteemed guest, Tomer from MTG Goldfish, didn't know Woo! that this had happened either. Uh, Tomer, I'd like to assume no. that the Canadian government protects you from travesties <laughs> like this. Uh, you guys have some sort of filter, whether it's coffee filter, condom, that protected you from the travesty that is home sweet, home alone. What the hell? They've now made a sixth home alone movie, <laughs> and... I mean, come on. The first one was phenomenal. Second one was good. Okay, it was it's good. Fine. But the third, I mean, you should have stopped. Should have stopped. Well, I mean, okay. hell, Batman mm. learned after Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, they were like, okay, we got to take a break. I mean, I'd be down for it if they keep the same actor, the kid actor. I forget <laughs> Macaulay his name. Culkin? Just like Macaulay Culkin. If he was the one okay. who was in the. He, like. They, they have everybody, like, new parents, new whatever. They're all age-appropriate, except Macaulay <laughs> Culkin is playing a five-year-old, five-year-old himself. I would watch that. Uh, okay, that would be so great. I do have some litigation on this one. I have seen almost all of them, if not trailers or people watching them, like, reviews of all I'm of them. I'm so upset. Home Alone 3 is bad. I think it's – is it – no, that's not French Stewart. That's Alan Rickon as the bad guy, um, which wow. is upsetting. Then you have uh, Home Alone 4, which is trash with French Stewart of 30 Rock from the Sun fame. But then you have the Holiday Heist, which is kind of the strikes back of the series in the sense of like, it's kind of like, it's at least the cover art's a lot better. You get back to the classic, like, and I think it's not that bad. Um, I, in the review I've read of Home Sweet Home Alone, I believe the tagline I saw was like, it's the best non Macaulay Culkin Home Alone made, but that is like saying it's like the best form of cancer or something. <laughs> like it's, it's, <laughs> it's not been getting great reviews. <laughs> I, it doesn't sound like this is like a sacred series or well, anything. No, like they had, I know number two, number two is fantastic. I watched it okay, you know, quite sure. a bit. It's, it's, Chris, it's Christopher um, Columbus who went on to direct things like The Incredibles and that sort of thing too. So, and it's set in Chicago, mm-hmm. Drake. Uh, it's it's great. It really feels good. I don't remember number one to be oh, honest. Oh, it's way better. <laughs> and and I did not know that they kept going after two. To be honest, so, this is all news to me. You come on the podcast with us Yankees down south and learn all with about us how Yankees <laughs> learn about how different homes are left alone in different cities with different <laughs> actors. Yeah, we just have a real issue with you, abandoning you, uh, you know <laughs> adolescent children. I don't know. We just don't care about them. <laughs> well, Macaulay Culkin can can take care of himself, so it's great. Um, yeah, do you, do we, is it a Christmas tradition to watch all of them or just uh, one two? and two? Yeah, so my household we actually uh, haven't done it in the, the last year or so, 
Um, but we usually actually watch a Christmas movie every single night. Mm. And for sure, Home Alone 1 and mm. 2 are in there. Uh, the only thing I will say before, Tomer, we want to hear about what's going on in your world, is I love Tomer's idea of Macaulay Culkin reprising his character. <laughs> But it needs to be that he's like the creepy, deranged old uncle that the family's supposed to take care of, <laughs> oh. but then they forget him at the house. But then he's just doing like middle aged oh men things. Uh, I like, think I don't know. I think there's trying a, to grind coffee. I think there's a short that I saw. <laughs> I'm going to look for it while, while you guys go through the, the introductions. I think there's one where he's like an Uber driver that then captures someone. It's like some ah. play on, and I just remember, yeah, here we are, uh, dra- d- drivers <laughs> featuring Macaulay Culkin. So uh, I'll go ahead and put that in the in the YouTube in the in the show notes for you guys to enjoy after the uh, recording. There we go. Well, Tomer, um, I know that you've had some things going on in your MTG Goldfish world, you know, potentially personal and professional world. So wh- why don't you kind of enlighten us? What's been going on in your life? No sleep. <laughs> no sleep. I heard it's overrated. It's preview season in the MTG world. Innistrad Crimson Vow came out. So it's full on preview season, which means full on crunch time. Oh, baby. So uh, I've been busting out a lot of like, you know, seasonal preview content. Uh, I got my reviews done. I did the pre con upgrades. They're all going to be up by the time uh, this comes out, I assume. And uh, we got a top, top 10 video coming out and uh, wow. other stuff, other budget uh, budget brews as well, because that's kind of my shtick is like, you know, if there's a new commander yeah. that comes out, I, I try to do like a, a budget article on the one that I'm the most excited about and show you how to build it like at $25 and $50 and, and, and on and on. So I have two of those coming out as well. Those should all be out at this point. And then after all that is done... I will go into my coffin like Edgar Markov, and I will sleep. <laughs> I will sleep until the next preview season. Uh, that's my the plan. only thing, my only question I have, and this is something I brought up with my local group, is it in fact a season when it never ends? Like, do you call a calendar year a season? Because that's what spoilers feel like to me. <laughs> I will say this: the 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 period between Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow was really nice. You know, maybe... You mean the 13 days? 13 days is enough for me to sleep and recover, all right? So <laughs> maybe maybe it seems like it's just all a blur to you, but I have those precious days, and I count them, and I savor every single moment, all right? Not that I'm going to complain too much. Like, previews are easy content for me, so it's like I don't really have to, like, turn off brain, make previews, like, super easy. And it's, it's fun and it's exciting, but, oh, I love I love those days in between. Those recovery days are great. Looking forward to that. One more week, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Tomer, one thing I've noticed that Goldfish has kind of ramped up on, and I guess maybe the last, like, four months, five months, is I've seen tons of videos from you or Seth um, that are, like, these, like, 30-second clips, like, hey, look at this new, like, short right? card yeah. combo that comes up in Standard or Modern or whatever. Um is, is that like a new strategy for your guys' channel? Is that something that's like, hey, we feel like people like short, consumable content. We saw, you know, TikTok obviously exploded. Mm-hmm. So people like this. Has that been an emphasis for you guys? Um, well, actually, this is like a, a relatively new thing from YouTube. They're calling it literally shorts. Um, oh, okay. And they're mimicking the the success of, of TikTok because TikTok, TikTok's like booming. So over the past two years, they've introduced this new format of videos on YouTube called Shorts, and they're made to be watched on mobile, and they're advertised heavily on mobile. And YouTube's going pretty hard on it recently, so they actually, yeah, uh, they incentivize you to do them by uh, actually allocating, I think it's like a yearly $3 million pool or something, that they divide wow, up to people based on like you know their short performance, and this is extra mana sure. on money on mana. Oh my god, I am tired. <laughs> I am tired. Right? It's extra money on top of like the usual YouTube. So I don't know. Yeah, that's like behind the curtains. But also, uh, the short content is is heavily pushed by YouTube in terms of promotions. So it's really mm. good. So like I'll I'll spend an hour making a short. You know, here's a cool combo with a new 
preview card like here's yep. how you one shot with this new card and uh it gets aggressively promoted by youtube in a way that the other videos do not and uh there's a new we're reaching out new audiences who really like that sort of content like you know like if you're taking a poop you don't want to watch a 15 minute video you want to watch a one minute <laughs> video depending on the poops you know, know. <laughs> yeah I yeah, mean, it's, e fair. it's either one 15-minute video or 15 one-minute videos for me. You know what I mean? I, my time there is good. And Mr. Combo, it's funny you mention that because there may be some stuff happening behind the scenes that I'll be talking to you about at a later date. <laughs> yeah, you should Ooh. do shorts. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> They're good. Well, I, I, I don't want to say anything now. But there's some soups that are currently simmering in that in that regard. We have enough broken promises made when we record bruise and builds over the years that uh, yes. I appreciate your brevity with that. Correct. Correct. So, so Tomer, I know that you've recently taken a little hiatus from Commander Clash. It sounds like you were just insanely swamped. But if our users still want to be able to find Tomer and other MTG Goldfish content, how would they do that? Uh, well, uh, you can find all my articles are posted on mtggoldfish.com. So... There's that. And then also I run uh, the MTG Goldfish Commander YouTube channel. We have two channels, the MTG Goldfish channel that covers everything that's not Commander, and then the MTG Goldfish Commander channel that's strictly for Commander. And I run all of that stuff. So if you want to find my content, including the shorts, uh, then you can you can go over there and you can find all that stuff there. Nice, nice. And uh, as every time that I record with Tomer, which I say that as if we record every week, this has only been the <laughs> second time with me, uh, he, you know, he puts out great content. Definitely go look at MTG Goldfish's Commander uh, page. Uh, you know, they put a lot of great stuff out there. Commander Clash each week that Tomer used to be a part of for many, many, many seasons. Um, definitely go do that because, I mean, outside of Tuck coming over from China introducing me to EDH, I mean, honestly, Tomer and MTG Goldfish introduced me to Commander. Um, and, I mean, I think for four years, I watched every Commander Clash beginning to end every Friday. Um, because that's how I educated myself. So I know that's why you guys listen to this content. That's why you guys go out there and watch shorts and YouTube. So uh, be sure to go hit up Tomer because he is what we would call a gym. Thanks. Oh, of course. Uh, but if you guys would like to support us uh, so that way we can continue to improve our content, improve our equipment, Tomer made the very nice uh, notice of, hey, Mr. Combo has a green screen. Uh, Big Tuck thought I just painted my wall. Uh, you should have it on our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash CMD Tower. We have four different tiers. The most exciting thing that you guys are going to hear about, and when you hear this, it should be live. Uh, we're doing a lot of time rigmarole ninja dancing right now. <laughs> Uh, so we do have our Jund Holiday Sweater on sale. So if you head to cmdtower.com slash merch, uh, you could purchase one. You don't have to be a patron. You don't have to be anything. You can literally just go buy it. They're 50 bucks, insanely soft. But here's the big bonus. If you join our Patreon, even if it's just the dollar Discord a month to chat with everyone, ask Tomer about his deck when his episodes come out, all of that, you get a $20 discount. I mean, that's literally 20 months of being in our Discord because we really just want to bring in community. We want to bring more people together. So if you like the holiday sweater and you want to save 20 bucks and put it towards something else, you should join that Patreon. Uh, plus, we do have Big Tuck Monarch tokens on there. We have many different tiers. You can definitely uh, find something that fits your budget and your passion. Now, if you can't do the Patreon, but you want to get the products, we talked about it, cmdtower.com slash merch. We have our play mats, our uh, sleeves, our monarch, our reminder, our coin. I mean, we got a whole lot of branded stuff on there. We are still developing our new Bruise and Builds foil play mat. Uh, hoping to try to get a sample of that in the next like two to four weeks. Uh, so we will even have more variety on there for you. Now, if you're an existing patron and you do want to grow the collective, but you're a little selfish, and like a smothering tithe, you would like to receive something for them drawing a card, uh, you could actually have them message us on Patreon. Let them know, hey, this is the uh, existing collective member that recommended us to join. We'll send you free swag. We'll send you some free referral stuff just for promoting, because once again, we want to grow the community as big as we can. Now, we could not do this video without our amazing uh, audio and video editor at underscore Teacoats. Tyler does editing for many different content creators in the Magic community. Uh, please make sure you comment, subscribe, 
send messages, emails, let us know how we can improve the content, what we're doing right, what we could do a little bit better, because we're always looking to improve. But hey, if you guys don't want to do any of that stuff, but you still keep listening to this, just share the content you're already listening and watching, because every little bit of interaction from the collective does help. So Brews and Builds is our deck tech series. Since we conquered the path to 32, tackled tons of EDH themes, we're going to be discussing, or rather theory crafting, a deck that doesn't Ooh. even exist yet. Each month <clears throat> will consist of new decks, and we correlate how these decks are constructed similar to how beer is brewed. So we broke it down to four different categories. The first one's ramp and setting your board state. We call that grains. Yes, and grains are the foundation of every beer. They include both base malts and specialty malts, usually in a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the alcohol content of the beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp into bigger threats. And just like a gra uh, grain profile, they usually mix of staples and specialty cards. Then we have how does your board interact with everyone else? We call that hops. Hops are what give the beer its patented bitterness and herbal floral flavors, growing a variety of strands. And just like this long weekend IPA, help distinguish these subcategories. Uh, also, this is sustain sustainably blurred. So look at that. So, 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 Without use cards, your deck would meet the goal of actually winning the game. And then we have shenanigans, it can be pet cards, synergies, maybe some salt that are Whoa. in the deck that are just kind of fun. We call that spice. And not every beer has them, but spices and other additives help separate a normal stock beer from a specialty one. It could be the pepper that turns a stout into jalapeno stout or the addition of uh, vanilla beans that turn a porter into a vanilla porter. Not every deck has something that makes it pop. If it does, this is where we generally talk about it. So, without further ado, let's get brewing. So, for the fourth episode of Theory Crafting, we called in the big guns, or as Tuck Ooh. mentioned earlier, I guess like medium sweater guns. I can't. Um, I, don't know how, I, don't, the I don't know how big Tomer <laughs> is. Medium. What are you? I'm guessing like <laughs> I'm guessing like five, eight, one sixty. No, one seventy-five. Is that close? You don't have to say. Just is it close? I don't know what that is in Canadian. Relatively, I think I think I'm I'm five foot eleven and one. Oh, nice. One eighty. Hey, I don't ah, know what that so is. So you know what? <laughs> so here's the thing: if you're a carny tomer, Tuck would not have won a big stuffed animal prize oh, because he clearly didn't get within a pound but, but or within an inch of your height. But he gets perhaps something? a pencil. Yeah, I, like a pencil maybe. I think you get sadness. Fancy eraser. <laughs> I, I get I get more sad because I'm already at a car I'm already at a place where there's a carny. That's what I get. And it's not even a carnival. It's yeah, just it's Starbucks. Just Starbucks. <laughs> so we called in Tomer from MTG Goldfish, but I was told he wanted some sodium for his deck, and he came to the kings of creating salt, Big yes. Tuck, and myself because we do not get hated out of games more frequently than anyone else on the planet. So. Tomer, who are we theory crafting around, and why did you choose this particular legend? All right, so uh, when this card got recently previewed, I immediately fell in love. This is Toxrel the Corrosive. It's a seven mana. It's five and double black for a oh. seven seven slug horror. And already uh, at this point, I've already been sold on this card because the <laughs> artwork is fantastic. And it's a slug oh, so horror metal. that's legendary, which is amazing, but it gets even better. Mm -hmm. So its first ability says, at the beginning of each end step, you put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Not just like a negative one, negative one counter or anything. It's a slime counter. So already, this went from like a commander or a creature that I'm really excited about to one I'm in love with. Um, but it gets even better. So after you put the slimes, uh, creatures you don't control get negative one, negative one for each slime counter on them. And then whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, you create a one, one black slug creature token. So you get little slug buddies. And then you can sacrifice them by paying blue and a black to sacrifice a slug and draw a card. So I love everything about this. It's a slug, it's a legendary, it's a horror, and it puts slime counters on things. Like how, I love it. What and you it, want? <laughs> it's so, when I was speaking to people about it, like, okay, so first of all, is it a really powerful commander at seven mana? Maybe not so much. However, I saw a lot of people getting really upset about this card, being like, uh, Toxrill's on I the heard. battlefield. 
It's gonna kill all my things. So I'm like, you we know just what? Just talked about this. Yeah. So so like, if people are gonna get salty about a seven drop slowly killing your opposing creatures, yes. then I figured, you know what? Why not we just take it all the way? If you're if people are gonna hit or be salty about just like a pathetic looking slug horror, then we go crazy salt. We make this the scariest, saltiest inducing <laughs> slug horror they've ever seen. Make it live up to its name of horror and slug. So that's what I I I, I ask of you, the brewmasters, to uh oh, do yeah. For me. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you came for the, you came to the right people for that. So here's the hilarious thing, Tomer, is you know, uh when me and Tuck were, were kind of working together before we started recording, he had mentioned like, have you heard yeah. about Toxrail being like everyone hates it and you gotta have rule zero conversation? <laughs> it's this yeah, aggressive like, card. I'm so confused. Because it's seven mana, it does one slime counter on each creature you don't control once per rotation. Or no, I guess it is each instep. So you could do, in theory, four slime counters a rotation. That's four negative ones. And one murder for three mana would kill this. I rest my point. I So I was reading up on this guy on uh, just doing some research. So, so far, there's already 263 decks pulled into EDH rec, which I think is hysterical because the card doesn't even come out yet. And I was reading their set review, and that's where they came from. It's like it's like people are gonna hate this card. It's you have to rule zero it. It has no evasion. It has a cute ability, but I mean, there's a lot of and Mr. Combo and I talk about this a lot. There's a lot of decks where it's like I'm running maybe one or four creatures that I really care about, and then I'm playing yep. spell slingers, or I'm playing giant creatures that I don't care if they die because I can just reanimate them, or like I only care about my commander, and then I have a bunch of removal to kill this thing. So. I don't. I mean, it's oppressive to uh, to an extent, but just the way it sure. reads, I was I was not like, if someone plays this, I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't you? It's hysterical. It's a great card. <laughs> I just think it's funny that if this card said like, if you cast this spell or whatever, destroy all creatures you don't control. Like we have those already. Like we have Reaver right, Demon. Yeah. There's like a uh, Dread Caco Demon and stuff like that, which yep. essentially does what this thing does. You know. Um, and if it just said it kills all opposing creatures, people would be like, ah, that's, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> but, but because it like slowly eats away at everybody, people are like, oh no, I can never play creatures again. It's just use a sword of plashers, one mana to kill it. Right. <laughs> it's a seven mana creature Just spend one mana, you know, just spend a mana in a card so, and you got rid of it. Boom. <laughs> Tomer, do you think the hate wouldn't be there? If it was five colorless black black still, but its activated ability was black black sack a slug draw a card, do you think it would get less hate then? If it wasn't not blue? being able to be blue, yeah. Nah, <laughs> I don't think. I, I don't think blue really. Like you could you get access to like counter spells or something. I don't know. In your like, favorite protection. mechanic, protection. draw cards. You can yeah, draw sure. All the, cards. the black can draw cards. Fine, like. There was some enchantment that the uh, Asian adventure mentioned that's like whenever a creature enters the battlefield, blow up all creatures that share a card type with it. <laughs> Lethal right? vapor. You can put yeah. that. That doesn't even have to be the commander. Like you can just put that in every deck, and everyone's like, "Oh, I don't know. Like, I'll just remove it." <laughs> like, I just, it's so silly to me. It's such a fun card. Uh, I just don't get. I don't get it personally. But who knows? Like maybe we'll just be overrun with copies of these, yeah. and in a year from now, we'll be like worst commander ever printed. It's. <laughs> Just make it's, them oh, salty then. Go. If they're going to get salty about it, you, give it, you go all the way. That's my motto. Here's how you go all the way. You go Demir Planeswalkers with Toxrill as the commander. That'll just piss everyone off. <laughs> I've run no reanimation package. <laughs> I have no creature defense. It's just Planeswalkers and my commanders are removal. And uh, Toxrill's the only piece of removal in the deck. It's, yes, it's quote, it's unquote. Off. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's great. Oh, All right, let's get into this. Uh, Tomer, as our esteemed guest, why don't you start? What is the first card you think in a Toxrill build you would need from a grain perspective? Okay, so from a grain perspective, setting up my board, uh, I want some mana fixing lands, you know? Um, so I found one. It enters the battlefield untapped, and it mana fixes for you, which is fantastic. It's called Forbidden Orchard. Or yes. Orchard? I don't even know how to say that yep. word anymore. Uh, forbidden something something. When it taps, you have to give an opponent a 1-1 one, one spirit creature token. <laughs> um, so you get mana awesome. fixing and you're group hugging. So everybody wins. Um, but the nice thing is, that now that they have a 1-1, one, one, uh, Toxtral will eat it and turn it into a little sludge for you, which is fantastic. <laughs> so here's the thing that I, I like about hearing that is, uh, one... 
me and Tuck usually never talk about lands because usually there's nothing yep. ever cool synergy wise. <laughs> it's like you could Rogue's do with just, Passage. What, yeah, it's like Rogue's <laughs> Passage, you know. But this is literally just kind of a mana land that has a downside. I said that in quotes. Uh, yep. That you have to give someone a 1-1, one, one, but it's like, oh, Toxrel will just literally kill it. Like, you could use this, give someone a 1-1, one, one, text Toxrel, and that's like, oh, I get a I get a slug at the end of turn. I get one. Yeah. Yay. It's great. Uh, are you willing to pay the iron price of $18 for this boy, though? <sighs> I mean, when we're going full salt, I feel like just styling no on object. them. <laughs> yes. No, money's no object on this one. This is a... This is a special mission, you know? Sure, 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 sure. I'll make an exception for, for old Toxie. Well, hopefully he'll make an exception and the next time in a few months when he's on uh, Commander Clash again, <laughs> maybe we'll see this theory craft. It'll be like, oh, Tomer's piling on the salt. <laughs> It'll be like that damn abacus that gets shaken. It'll just be a thing of Mr. Morton's salt and you just hear this pour. And it's like, oh yeah, he's he's laying it on. Yeah. That's why I got fired is because they knew I was going to tox roll them out if I was on the season. Um, so, so next season, I'll have my revenge. I'll bring this out. There we I'll, go. I'll bring it back. All right. Well, uh, my first grain, because here's the thing. I'm not a monster. I know what Tomer likes to do. He likes to draw <laughs> cards. But I'm also a monster. I was I, just going like to say, wait a minute. <laughs> so I like to do degenerate things. So I wanted to do something that's a little bit fair. It's slow. It would technically take one and a half rotations to kick off. But... Tomer, why don't we put an Archmage Ascension? Two colorless blue enchantment. It's a rare from Zendikar. At the beginning of each end step, if you drew two or more cards this turn, you may put a quest counter on Archmage Ascension. As long as Archmage Ascension has six or more quest oh, counters, God. if you would draw a card, you may instead tutor for a card and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Wow. For cool 330. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like drawing yeah. cards. As long as you're drawing a lot of cards, then this is a good incentive to draw cards. Well, I, I kind of look at Toxril, and you do have the Demir Sack of Slug draw a card. Mm. And look, I like I talked about, I watched Commander Clash literally for four years straight. So that's <laughs> 200 episodes or whatever you guys are at, it seems like. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen an episode where you're like, ah, I don't want to draw a card. Even no. if it's disadvantageous, and I remember I told Tuck to watch the Commander Clash that you filled in for Krim last week, because I believe you died keeping <laughs> Coveted Jewel because you wanted to draw three cards. I wanted to send a message, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to send a message, and uh, I think the message was sent. I actually could have saved myself, too. Uh, some people actually caught that in the comment section where, like, I could have saved myself, but instead I just killed one of Seth's creatures when I was leaving <laughs> leaving the game. <laughs> this is why we like having you on so much, because all three of us are extraordinarily petty magic players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was 100% a spite play. Are willing to die on hills for no reason, but that's... Absolutely. I really wanted to keep the coveted drool. Seth wanted to draw cards. I wanted to draw cards more. <laughs> I won that battle, but then I immediately died for it, and I regret nothing. Um, so I agree. This is very good. I just see uh, Tomer sacking all of his slugs and having no defense just to draw some Doesn't cards. Matter. Well, Mr. Combo, if I may, that segues perfectly into Ooh. my into my pick. And actually, all three of these cards, coincidentally, all work out really well together because... I don't, I don't know how much you want to lean into pro proliferate, right? I don't think I want to... I wouldn't build a deck around it, but if you have a card that lets you do it, that has a bunch of other shit stapled onto it that you want, seems like a slam dunk to me. And for that, I put up Yogmoth Thran Physician. So two colorless double black for legendary creature human cleric. It's about $23. It's a 2-4 protection from human. Pay one life, sack another creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter up to one target creature, and draw a card. And then for two colorless, discard proliferate. So now those 1-1s one or those 4-4s four that are starting to get a little bigger, they're still getting <laughs> those slime counters going down. You discard, proliferate on them, put that one final counter on them by sacking a slug, draw your card off of that. Then that puts a counter onto Archmage Ascension. Then on the next turn, they kill your slug, which is fine. So then you tap for Forbidden Orchard, put a one, one, pay one life, put a counter on that, draw another card, then tutor up another I feel thing like you, you goldfished, uh, not to plug and tend. Uh, I feel like you goldfished that whole synergy right there. Like but you it's, literally it's, it's, had written it out. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't put either of these cards in here. 
Uh, I did not look at the Forbidden Orchard or anything. I'm just saying that Thre- Yagmoth does so much work in and of itself, but these three cards together is like the perfect gray <laughs> oh, yeah. non nightmare package. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bud. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> oh, man. We should have done voices because we could have had uh, Tomer do the uh, the Canadian oh, the from Grown Ups. I cannot do voices. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good thing it was not mentioned earlier. No. I, well, as it, as it turns out, I can't either. Yeah, that is fact. Uh, hmm. But it's okay. I can't do Angelina Jolie and Beowulf because I don't even know what <laughs> it is. That's the only one. Uh, so, Tober, what is your last grain card for this Toxroll build? Okay, so I really like drawing cards. And I think one card that would fit really well with Archmage's Ascension, a little bit of an enabler, and it's one of my favorite cards from Midnight Hunt. And I've been running in basically almost all my black decks because they happen to be usually creature sacrifice decks. This is Morbid Opportunist. Um, this is a three mana, a one, three, two and a black, uh, human rogue. And it says whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So imagine this on your turn, you you sacrifice a slug, you draw a card off the slug, you draw a card off the opportunist and then end step, uh, on (laughs) other people's end steps, they lose a thing. Well, I mean, end step, other people's creatures are dying every single end step. So you're drawing at least one card. This thing can draw two, three cards per turn cycle pretty consistently. Wow, easily, yeah. Um, and yeah, so it is capped on once, but it's not once per turn cycle. It's once per turn, your turn, opponent's turn, and, and each opponent's turn. Uh, so you can potentially be drawn like in a four-player game, four cards per turn cycle on a three drop. And it's a three-mana creature, so it, you're in black. You can just reanimate it, you know, when you need to. You know, you can entomb it. You can do whatever. It's, qu- it's quite tasty quite tasty and it's like 25 cents by the way 25 cents i love the synergy with archmage ascension to get to six but the interesting thing is actually once you hit six morbid opportunist is awful because you don't ever get to draw a card you are just tutoring your cards isn't that good well it, it is except for and i guess it does say may um so because basically here's what would happen when you do the the double draws you don't i think you would just tutor one and then the morbid opportunist would never trigger Wait, i think on. what it would work i the way i'm reading the arch marine's ascension is it's a replacement effect yes, so every single you time right. you draw uh, so anytime you would draw a card off Mor- morbid opportunist uh you may instead you could either draw the card or you may instead mm. just search your library and mm-hmm. tutor up a card so i think it works actually kind of <laughs> pretty well <laughs> oh that's gross oh and oh, then kind uh, of good. <laughs> yeah and then i got another card that i'm gonna wrap up with my green that's gonna make it that much better uh wait because... hold on before you do that so this card's the morbid opportunity is definitely going in tasa but mr combo shirai it's a one drop your second creatures every turn oh wait is it yeah it's one three. Oh. <laughs> or Shizo? oh yeah oh yeah that, that's you know yeah yeah shito's uh caretaker uh um, yeah yeah, yeah. Actually, that was, Tomer, funny enough, a deck I built off of seeing Richard play it, I think, like, three years ago, something like that. Because I remember oh, yeah. he talked about why you shouldn't have Skull Clamp in the deck because it doesn't work. And I didn't put it in, and my entire play group was like, why aren't you doing Skull Clamp? I'm like, you guys don't understand. Richard said it. He knows what's right. <laughs> I don't actually know if he was right, but He's I, not I've, right. I've died. <laughs> you run Skull Clamp. <laughs> 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 but I thought what it died. Uh, anyways, all right. But no, Morbid Opportunist would be amazing in my Shirai deck, considering I would draw oh, yeah. so many cards. Yeah, that would be super fun. And then when it dies, yeah, you can just get it back. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty sweet. All right. Well, something, and Tuck kind of laid the groundwork. I was worried I was going to get laughed at because I might have misunderstood Tox Rill by including negative one synergies. But he put in Yawgmoth, so good it works until we get to my hop section where it gets real good. Nest of Scarabs. Two colorless black Ooh. enchantment. Whenever you put one or more negative counters, negative one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect creature tokens. Ooh. Now here's the thing. <laughs> now here's the thing though. Toxril puts slime counters, not negative counters. So you're not gonna get it off of Toxril, but I truly believe if you're building a salty Toxril deck, you're gonna have a sub theme of negative counters because you wanna you wanna stack those effects. And so I think Nest of Scarabs at three mana, you're going to have enough negative one abilities in the deck. I think it still makes a lot of sense. 
and now when your tox reeling stuff is dying you're getting slugs but then you know maybe it had a negative counter put on it so now you're getting an insect you can almost try to double up your token production so then that way you're almost like a really go wide salty deck which seems odd sack them out I'll i think it. it works yeah, yeah if we're adding great. proliferate we're adding counters and it makes sense to add negative one negative one counters as well because you yeah. can you can double those as well. If you're gonna have an army of one ones, which might play into something that we're gonna be talking about a little bit later, you might as well have tons of them. So I'm I'm here for it, Mr. Combo. I think this is a great pick. What do you mean we're not in green? You can't put in Triumph of the Hordes. Oh, of course, why not? But maybe you can. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> All right. Well, Tuck, why don't you take us home with your final grain? Mine's very basic. Um, I think black market's a pretty easy oh, slam yep. dunk in here. So three colors, double black. When a creature dies, put a charge counter on black market. Plays with peripherate. If we're going to go that route, like mm -hmm. we just said, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black for each charge counter on black market. Um, it's pretty kind of meat and potatoes, but spoiler alert, Toxtral is probably going to get blown up once maybe seven times so being able to generate eight mana off of this almost the turn after you cast it depending on how the situation boils out to be is going to yep. make it a lot easier to cast your commander as well as the other things that you want to do proliferating casting these other spells drawing your cards and that sort of thing so again five bucks kind of a basic pick but it just works so well in the stack yeah it's easy I... a lot of smiles and nods <laughs> i like it <laughs> it makes All sense right. to me it's easy well, that's going to wrap up our grain section. Now let's move over to the hot profile, and I'm going to start this bad boy off. It's a six drop, so it's going to be expensive to cast. It's about a buck fifty to pick up in paper. I think Midnight Banshee is a slam dunk in this deck. Three colorless, black, 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 creature spirit rare. It has wither, and it's a five, five. Oh. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a negative one counter on each non-black creature. I Whoa. think that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> upkeep, get negative counters. Uh, in step getting slime counters, which is effectively negative counters, seems powerful. It plays into proliferate. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is awesome. Yep. This is incredible. It plays into proliferate. It plays with the nest of scarabs, you know? So yeah. yeah. It kills things a lot faster. I think having something like this to your point, Mr. Combo, of this like kind of backup plan is going to be really critical in this so that you're not completely dependent. Because again, I think Tomer, Mr. Combo, especially, and sometimes myself, really build it like commander down. I think having this sort of package in here that synchronizes so well and synergizes so well is really important to have when your commander keeps getting killed and so that you can do something even if he's not out. And it's a seven drop. I mean, it's kind yes. of- It's a seven drop, yeah. yeah. It won't be on the battlefield for long. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to how when people build colorless decks because they're usually Eldrazi based. You, you, you still might build it top down, but you try to figure out ways to win within the 99 that doesn't need the Kozilek or Ulamog or whoever you have at the helm. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'm all for that and a lot of people because i even made the mistake when i was first building this list you forget when toxrill leaves the battlefield they're just slime counters they aren't bad mm. for your opponents so you're absolutely right tuck you need cards like this that can supplement kind of that theme but it doesn't necessarily have to have toxrill out that's the big downside to toxrill yeah. if you were to do like i talked about demir planeswalkers you better have lots of ways to reanimate him because once he dies, the slime counters you put out are worthless. All Definitely. right. Tuck, what is your hop? So this one, I don't really know where it landed. It was kind of a grain. It's kind of a spice. Um, but I think this can kind of act as like a burst removal and draw slug rebuilder. And it's Hunted Phantasm. So a colorless double blue for a creature spirit, Hunted Phantasm can't be blocked. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates five one one red goblin creature tokens. <laughs> That's really good. I, yeah. So I think it's a hop. I don't know. It's kind of like a hop and a grain. I I, I really kind of debate it on that, right? Because pretty much when you cast this, you just get five slugs, right? Yeah. You play, you, you play your commander, play this, and just get five slugs of which you want to do whatever you want, right? Yeah. And then you have a four, six unblockable, which is pretty good for three, right? I don't know how much we're going to be getting into the red zone, but that actually does come into play with my one of my yeast picks. So just seems like it's a very efficient way to help build your board and ruin someone else's day, or I guess it's not even their choice. Just make them a, make them an accomplice into your own schemes. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Uh, Tomer, I know that you guys at Goldfish love uh, being meme -y. You know, the... Uh, uh, you know, our running joke is always homin hominids. Uh, I know uh, Richard <laughs> loves skeletons. Maybe you do Hunted Tribal in here. Because I'm looking at the Hunted cards. Yeah. 
I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, even Hunted Nightmare, they get a death touch counter. Well, you'll probably kill the thing before they can do anything with it. The horror, right. you make two, th or they make two, three, three centaurs uh, with protection from black, but this doesn't target, so it's just going to put it on there, and it's a 7-7 seven, mm -hmm. seven for trample with for two. I think, I Tuck, I, I usually laugh at the Hunted cycle. Uh, yeah. I think actually it makes a lot of sense in Tox roll. Yeah. I mean, there's there's quite a few of these cards. That, the Hunted Cycle are really good. Um, I don't know how many are available in Demir, but I I know there's at least two. There's, there's like the there's, there's, there's uh well the Nightmare? third one. Well, yeah, horror. there's yeah there's three. It's the mm. Phantasm Nightmare and Horror. horror. And there's a yeah. Ghoul, but it's worthless. And they're pretty <laughs> large. Like the whole shtick with them is that they're enormous creatures, but they come yep. with this downside of giving your opponents creatures. So. We're getting these under cost of creatures that are going to be turning, and then the downside of it is we give away stuff that we draw cards off of and mm -hmm. turn into sludge. Mm -hmm. So I, I think these are excellent. There's also like Clackbridge Troll. I remember from oh, Eldraine. Yes. That, that card, was on the list, and I had to cut it. I remember that card. Yeah, but this is I I, I think this would be grains. But also another one was like Slaughter Specialist is like also super insane. Mm -hmm. Gives everybody a one one, and you get a, a three three, but it grows every single time an opponent's creature dies. So it just becomes like an 8 8 or something, like Jesus. almost immediately. So it's fun. <laughs> That's insane. This is a good way of taking it. Yeah. Well, Nailed Tomer, it. why don't you give us your first hoppy card? The sledge counters are pretty cool and they're very unique. However, it's not the first time we've seen sledge counters uh, in on a Magic the Gathering card. Uh, recently in Midnight Hunt, we got another card that puts sludge counters on things, and it's Sludge Monster. It's also horror, and I love it oh so much. <laughs> Um, it's a five mana, five, five, blue, uh, three and double blue for a creature horror that says whenever sludge monster enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter on up to one other target creature and non horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness two two. It's almost, oh my God. it's actually saltier. <laughs> it's saltier than tox real because imagine you slime up an opponent's commander their entire deck is sometimes usually built around it, right? Yeah. So they, they really want to make sure that if their commander dies, you know, uh, they can just re recast it. But what happens, what's even scarier for, for that poor commander is if it becomes a, a, a little slime beast with no power, with no, with no abilities and just does nothing and it can't go back to the commands to be recast, it has to find a way to die first. Which I just find is hilarious. Here's the more hilarious thing. Because Goldfish plays on MTG Online, I think you just found a way to possibly break MTGO. How does the layers work on this? Because they become a 2-2. Two -two. What if it's on a 1-1, one -one, but then it's supposed to get negative 1, so it should, in theory, die. But now it's technically base power and toughness 2-2. Two -two. What, what layer lands on what? And brain broken. And also, it's it, this is sort of a nombo because if you any creature that is on the battlefield for w two end steps immediately dies well when tox was like, on it, the battlefield they when tox was on the battlefield yes yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of like a backup so what tox does is tox puts a, a slime counter on all the creatures the yep. slime counters don't go away when tox dies so imagine you put a bunch of slimes on each opposing creature and then tox dies and they're still alive well, oh. Sludge Monster comes <laughs> around and says, hey, I see you all have slime counters on you. They no longer get negative one, negative one for each slime counter until Toxville's back on the battlefield. But Sludge Monster says, hey, well, guess what? Now you're all just two twos that have no abilities. And now you have to get rid of the Sludge Monster too. And then, well, the counters are still there. So you recast Toxville, you reanimate Toxville. And, oh, well, now they all die. So it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like this little back and forth thing. Like you don't really need both on at the same time. Toxville really got it by itself. But Sludge Monster is kind of like a nice little a little setup. You know, like if you don't have Toxville yeah. on the battlefield at any given time, you can sludge them up with the Sludge Monster. Or if Toxville didn't kill everybody, then Sludge Monster turns them all into useless two twos. It's just like a little. And they're both horrors. I feel yeah. like I feel like they gotta be together. And you and know, they're in two different. They're in one. This is the set that just came out. They're right? both su like, they're both such yeah. cuties, and I I, I want to make sure that the cuties stay together. All right. So that's the, the, the main thing. The question I have though for you, Tomer, because we we kind of joked around how everyone's like, ah, oh, it's a toxic card, pun intended, and rule zero it. My thing though is, doesn't it be kind kind of hard? 
to have Toxril and Sludge Monster in the deck and not just when you have the first opportunity tutor up Sludge Monster. Oh, like you like, mean like uh, when Archmage, the first time you draw two yeah. cards off of Midnight Opportunity or Morbid Opportunist and oh, Archmage yeah. Ascension? Like, oh, I feel yeah. like I, I, it almost becomes like, and Tuck knows this, if I have Grim Monolith on the battlefield and I tutor, I'm always getting Power Artifact. It's right, just, yes. the, it almost becomes where it's like a, it's not CEDH, but it becomes that streamlined competitive thought. Like, oh, I have this out. We have a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to tutor first chance I get to the Sludge Monster. How would you recommend someone hold back from just like oh this is so awesome but I really shouldn't do it because maybe it's not a good play experience. Don't play the card. <laughs> yes! Wow. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> Here's the thing like Sludge Monster it will make people who are really uh, excited about their commander become less excited because you kind of took apart their commander's ability to interact. It's not really a problem so much if your opponents just run removal but if you're at a low power table and people don't have removal, you know, and they're running low power, you know, silly stompy decks that are very battle cruisery. If you're bringing a sludge monster and nobody has an answer to it, they're going to be really upset. So in those situations, just take out the card, <laughs> just throw in an island or something <laughs> instead. But if you're at like a medium power table or a high power table and you're sludging somebody's uh, commander and they they literally can't deal with a 5-5 five five with no protection from removal. <laughs> you got got. You got slimed. I'm sorry. Figure it out. I got slimed. Oh, God. Figure it out. Tomer's going to create... He, he's going to make a t-shirt that's like the uh, Nintendo Bill Ooze t-shirt from like the... No, it's going to be the, like the Nintendo... What was it? Ooze or Goose or... I can't remember what they used to call it. Like Gak. He's gonna make like a Gak t-shirt. Oh, and it's like, and Gak, yeah. oh yeah. And uh, it's like, oh, you got Gakked. Got Gakked. Yeah. I don't ever want to see this. I want to see four Toxtral decks in a pod. Toxtral versus Toxtral versus Toxtral versus Toxtral. I just that see the nightmare awful. that comes out of that. <laughs> well, I'm gonna move this nightmare along to my final hop card. Once again, I talked about the negative counter. The cool thing, though, is that you kind of can chain this to pseudo-remove out your opponent's board um, as long as you have the, enough Tox roll slime counters out. Uh, Blowfly Infestation. Oof. Two colorless black enchantment. It's an uncommon. Uh, three bucks. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had a negative counter on it, put a negative counter on target creature. So pretty oh. easy. You know, if, if just so happens your opponents did get the Drake train going and there were a lot of two twos and you only got one slime counter, you could Yawgmoth, Sack a Slug, negative counter, it died up and just chain it down. Granted, it's also kind of redundancy for Toxril because Toxril does it at end step. So it, it, I think it's a fun card that you could play around with. Also, this does open up Tomer to where if you want to start putting in things where you put negative counters on your own stuff to get some sort of benefit or advantage at least then oh that stuff died well now I can put it on my opponent's stuff if I need to yeah love it love it love it love it love Plays the chain to the themes I like it we did it <laughs> what's a theme unless you hold to it yeah combo, Mr. Combo is the best I think one of the best in the biz for sticking to the theme he always calls <laughs> me out on it and he's always right I'm sorry there if you have a theme why would you move from it uh, so Big Tuck, give us your last hop card. First one was Hunted Phantasm. Is it maybe another Hunted? It is not, um, but it does effectively kind of the same thing, just a little greasier, if you will, um, or a little more sweaty, rather. So uh, this is an enchantment I had never heard of before called Infernal Genesis. So four colors, double black for an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player mills a card. Then they create X11 black minion creature tokens where X is the milled card's mana value. What? Are we also putting Alter the Brood in the deck? Believe it. We absolutely we could. We very well could. But so for me, it's like, this is kind of a, this is why I call this like a sweaty one because it's like, if you hit a land, nothing happens. If you hit a one, one, uh, one drop, so what? For me though, I think Tomer had mentioned that he wants to play a little bit of a reanimator package into this. So for me, this is like not as bad for you, right? Like you're gonna have the ways to get back your creatures, your slub monsters of the worlds, even your commander. So you milling something isn't that end of the world. Plus you're gonna continue to build up this idea of this one one army that you can use for your own purposes. And if you have Toxrel out, you're just gonna it's just gonna go off when, on each player's turn. So that's the only thing though, Tomer, oh, before you respond to that that worries me because basically we now have a 13 mana investment to make this card worthwhile because i don't think you want to have this card on the battlefield if you don't have tox roll like it just doesn't make sense 
I think if you go, I think if you have the multiple ways to do the chaining of the one ones, then there's some value there, right? They kind of built up this one one army, and then you do one kill it with bloat fly infestation, and then do a board wipe and draw off it, right? Yeah. But it does play to your point, Mister Combo. It does play very heavily into Toxel being on the battlefield. Yeah. There was another one that we talked about was the Banshee, I think. Uh, what was the name of it? If we put negative yes. one, negative one. Oh, but it's black, right? Yeah. It doesn't put it on black creatures. Yeah, correct. Mm. It's non-black. So that's that's kind of stinky. I but. mean, it, it it but it's very cute, and I like it. <laughs> I will say <laughs> this. The art by Ron Spencer is very detailed. <laughs> they have lots of muscles in places. I didn't think make-believe tigers had <laughs> muscles. It looks like a nightmare version of, an, uh, what was it, Animorph? What was oh, that? oh yeah. Book series. Was, uh, yeah, people turning it's into like, a falcon. Yeah. It's almost, it, it kind of reminds me of that, except like a fevered dream of it. <laughs> Although, I mean, the Animorphs book covers were also kind of really messed up. I mean, there was a stuff. period in my childhood, I am uh, not ashamed to admit, I would close my eyes, touch my dog, and try to absorb its DNA so I could then oh, turn it to a dog and yes if you're curious i did in my mind turn into a dog and i'd walk around the house on all fours <laughs> pretending to be an animal and make say, no one could see me <laughs> yeah you're, yeah and, and i this was, was I, only the start of the, the pandemic parents drinking, your parents are drinking coffee and looking in the backyard it's like i guess you read another animal thing and it's like <laughs> <"Caca>, caca. <laughs> and yes i was like 11 or 12 doing this so <laughs> i love it i absolutely Amazing. love it all right. Well, uh, Tomer, bring us home with your hop. What do you got? Okay. So the hop. Uh, this is a card that it doesn't necessarily work with Tox Rill, but this is interaction with the board. And it's just a card that I really like. And we're in Demir. So I'm going to bring it. It's Ashiok Dream Render. Yes. Um, <laughs> Let's go. So, so something that people do a lot is tutor. And I'm not so much of a fan of the whole tutoring. So Ashiok, what it does, it's a three mana, uh, two and hybrid blue and black. Uh, it's a legendary plague walker, Ashiok, starting loyalty five. And spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. So it just sets off all tutoring action from your opponent's. Um, that they're doing. You, you can't like force them to tutor and, and, and do stuff, but uh, it shuts off like, you know, if you if they're trying to search up an answer to talk thrill or whatever, all our shenanigans, nope. Ashiok says no. And uh, we're gonna back it up with our army of sludges and talk thrill and whatever else we reanimate. And then another thing I like is I like I like stopping our opponents from from doing graveyard shenanigans. I like graveyard shenanigans, but I'm the only one allowed to do so at the table. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it exiles all of their graveyards, only theirs. They put the top four cards. A target player puts the top four cards of the library into the graveyard, then exile each uh, opponent's graveyards. I would imagine we're targeting herself with the mill. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be doing a lot of reanimation, that just kind of helps our game plan. But uh, then we're going to just wipe all of our opponent's boards and, uh, graveyards. And guess what? They're going to be salty about it, especially if they're a graveyard deck. Like if they're Marin of Clan El Toth, or whatever nonsense they got going on. This is the <laughs> saltiest thing you could possibly do. And then what are they going to do about it? Uh, oh, you're going to reanimate a threat? Nope, you can't anymore. Your, your graveyard's gone. And I'm going to do it again next turn, too. You see, watch. <laughs> and the Tober's like, and I'm going to use that Yawgmoth to proliferate, and I'm going to do Ashiok every turn. <laughs> you want to tutor up an answer to Ashiok? Guess what? You can't. Oh, you want to crack that fetch line? Oops, a daisy. You get nothing. <laughs> you, get <laughs> and, you get punished for paying the iron price on those fetch lands. Yeah, they just lose the land and they lose one life and then they cry and they learn to do better. And ah, the great I thing like is that if you guys want the Ashiok Dream Render in the Japanese alternate art with the launch day stamp, you can get it for a cool $117 <laughs> or pay a dollar fifteen and get the regular. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go that's, for the ladder. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up the hop section. Now we're going to head over to how the tech closes out and wins. And Tuck, I think you get to grace us with your madness. What are you picking? All right. I got one cool one and one boring one. So which one should I go with first? Go with the boring and end with the cool. Okay. Excellent. I'm, I'm so glad you said that. Uh, well... Mr. Combo, the nightmare continues. Graphic that's a skeleton. Be... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's much worse than that. Because what's one card in black that's a human knight 
that we have bemoaned. Oh my God! Are over you putting in Sir Conrad? <laughs> yeah, we're putting in Sir Conrad, baby. Gosh, damn it! All day, Sir <laughs> Conrad. Cannot escape the this. Three, three, it's, I think. What is this? Definitely two weeks in a row. What? Eight podcasts we brought. We talked about this on. Maybe more. It's a good card. <laughs> three colorless, double black for a legendary creature, human knight. Whenever another creature dies. Or a creature card is put in the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield. Or a creature card leaves your graveyard. Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. Kill us and a black. Each player mills a card. What more do you want? Things are going to be dying. Slugs are going to be dying and get created and sacrificed for value. You're going to sludge monster these other things. They're all going to die immediately on the stack. <laughs> it's just going to be an absolute slaughter. So very efficient, very clean way to win, if not a little boring. Tomer, I got a question for you. You've been doing content longer than Tuck and I have. Probably been playing Commander longer than we have. Sir Conrad the Grim. It's an uncommon. We don't see it often. Uncommon legends stand the test of time in Commander. Do you think this is a Commander that's going to be around for the next decade? I mean, I just don't see why it doesn't just keep getting run in the 99 or as the head of the deck. Our next decade is... That's a... It's a long time. That's a while. But you could say like next two years, and that would still be really tough for me, honestly. <laughs> with the rate of power. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like 2022 Magic, they'll print literally Sir Conrad's little sister or something, and it'll be the exact same text, but it'll cost two black instead of five. <laughs> right. And that'll just be it. Two, two black and pay five life. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> A new secret lair alert. It's Sir Conrad's sis- little sister. And it's like, or maybe it's like the floating skull of Sir Conrad, Ooh. and it's literally the same text. <laughs> it, could, it could be literally Lady. the same text. It just costs two mana this time. Who knows? Lady and he draws Grimm. a card, went into the battlefield. No, it, it's like Sir Conrad the Grim. It should be uh, Lady Karen the Grim. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it? It's a fantastic card right now. Would I run it right now? Yes, I absolutely would. <laughs> Who knows? In a couple years. When we get like Commander Legends two and there's shenanigans, we'll see. I mean, hell, uh, I mean, Atraxa and Brea are still front and center four or five years later. So, um, but this is this is one that I mean, as Tuck mentioned, we will do deck, and it's hard not to put Sir Conrad in a deck. We have people in our play group that like run it in almost all of their decks. It, it's almost turned into Alter the Brood for some people in our group because it's like why wouldn't i put it in it's black yep. and it's just like it's insane because it's five mana i don't know of any other five mana cards where it's like oh yeah i should probably just put it in why not yep yeah it's on the on the high end but its impact is so great it's yeah. like yeah wipe my graveyard i dare you <laughs> like i'll put you can block myself <laughs> and this thing, which is hilarious i love it it's like the great like the turn from graveyard hate too well i love it tomer why don't you give us your first game winner all right, well, this is the reason why I like Toxreal so much. Is like when this came when this card came out, I was like, this must be done. And it's going to be super <laughs> salty, and it was kind of like the impetus between be, behind all, the entire idea of a salty Toxreal deck. This is where it all came from. So it's actually a two-parter. It's a little bit of a cheat. Uh the first card is obviously Toxreal. Mm-hmm. It's kind of important to the game plan here. The second card is an innocent-looking land. It's called Urborg Tomb of Yogma. And this is a fine little land. It's a legendary <laughs> land. It says each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types, which is fine. This is mana fixing for us. Basically, it says all of our colorless lands and our blue only lands are going to also tap for black. So it's great. And it's even helpful. It's a group hug card, I would say. Because if, if somebody else needs is, is hurting for mana fixing for black, uh, this Urborg is, is helping them out. So the entire table's just chilling, just vibing with this card out. Everybody's having a great time. But now that we have Toxel on the battlefield and we have Urborg on the battlefield, we play another little card. Uh, it's called Cormus Bell. Uh, this is a card that not a lot of people know of, and uh, now now you do, and sorry. Uh, this is a, a four-mana artifact, and it says all swamps become 1-1 one, one black uh, creatures. Oh, oh, oh my god. Uh, the swamps are still lands, and, and uh, they still count as, as swamps. They're still lands, but they're also 1-1 one, one creatures. All well and good by itself. So now Urborg turns, it, it, Urborg turns everybody's lands into swamps, and Cormus Bell turns all swamps into one-one creatures. So now everybody's lands are one-one creatures. Then End Step resolves, and Toxville says, "Hey, all your creatures, including your lands, get a slime," and then they die. So you destroy all your opponent's lands, and you make an army of sludge. 
And then you beat them to death with your, <laughs> your slot. For one dollar and sixty three cents for this artifact for fourth edition. <laughs> it's very good. I That's call it horrendous. the Elish Norn special because this is what you would do used to do with Elish Norn. Very similar oh. thing. You turn them all into swamps and you kill with Elish Norn. Talks roll though. Even better. Because <laughs> you can run Urborg in a mono white deck because magic's stupid. <laughs> you can, but Toxville is even better because now the Urborg makes even more sense for you because it's mana fixing for you. So the funny thing is that you literally just, you wanted to make a salty deck and you literally made a deck to where I almost think now if Tomer sits down at a pod, oh, I'm going to play Toxville. Nobody's going to want to play it. It's like, uh, are Good. you playing that bell card? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking that about. The rule. Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's amazing. Good. And Form terrifying. Well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tomer, but you're not big on like mass land destruction, that sort of gimmick, right? In general. I think it's a valid win condition. I'm that guy. Oh, God. Yes. I had a podcast on it recently, and it was actually kind of funny because Richard uh, in the commander class group is the guy who actually has won the most off mass land destruction. So he'll usually be like, all right, I'm playing Boros. I have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield. You don't. I'm going to Armageddon. Good game. I win. And I thought that was really good. But then he's like, no, this is actually highest on my salt scale. We did a salty talk. <laughs> and he was like, mass land destruction is very salty because people can use it inappropriately. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, me, I'm just like, Toxro plus Kormus Bell plus Urborg. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and you can't stop me. That, the game is effectively over at that point, so I, I like that. Tuck, you say that, but then it's Toxerill's ability goes on the stack. You just, you know, path to exile, murder, maybe strip mine, sure. and then you're good. Strip mine. <laughs> if you kill Toxerill before the the uh, end step happens, everybody now has just one one uh, land, swamp lands, uh, which is fine. <laughs> but see, I think uh, it'd be funnier to have Toxerill out in step happens, trigger goes on the stack, then you get rid of Toxril, so the slime counters still go. So then they just have the fear of I play Toxril. Yeah. <laughs> if I you recast I, I, Toxril, it's gone. It's a it's, it's a nine mana Armageddon. Armageddon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think that's like a stylish way to end it. And yeah, also like sure. at that point, you have like, you know, twenty or so slugs your opponents have no lands on the battlefield if they have a removal spell you know like they top deck uh, uh planes and sorts of plowshares talk drill they're still dead you still yeah. have an army of slugs they're gonna get it done give it two turns like goals and everybody's dead so sure. it i ends it i could already visually imagine tuck if i did that to the goad uh, I think he would immediately give me the finger, step up, and leave. I, th I was gonna say he'd be he would leave his cards and just walk out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, All I'll right. come and get these. I'll come get these when I've cooled off. Well, I'll go with my first yeast card. I went up more into that negative counter for the sub theme, but this card is insanely powerful. It's also a one power going in my Shirai deck, even though I don't run this Ooh. synergy. Necro Skitter. Of course you're putting it in the deck. Oh, God, yeah. Colorless, black, black, creature elemental, rare. It's a 1-4. It has wither. Um, and it states whenever a creature an opponent controls with a negative one counter on it dies, you may return that card to the battlefield under your control. Insanity. Ugh. Insane. Yeah, it's really good. That sounds very salty. I very much appreciate it. Everybody gets salty <laughs> when you you kill their creatures and then you use it to beat their own faces with it. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that. I and appreciate like that it, a lot. Know. Well, and the nice What's thing the is that this partners really, really well with my uh, Midnight Banshee because I believe, and Tomer, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this should operate similar to Marin with a board wipe to where if this is out and someone board wipes, Marin still gets her experience counters just where I think you would still get their creatures back. So if you have this and the Midnight Banshee, Midnight Banshee upkeep, negative counters on all your opponent's non-black creatures, up oh, Necro Skitter. Do you want a board wipe? If so, I steal everything. You yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, <laughs> have at it. And, and I think that actually makes for a very cool play style where you kind of modally force your opponents. God, I can't do a sweeper. I have to target remove because if I sweep, they go ahead. But if I don't get rid of his board, he goes ahead. And you just put them in this like... Uh, box and they just can't figure out which way to get out of it. We on the podcast have talked a lot about how we love forcing our opponents to make the choice. And this is the exact sort of situation where that plays out perfectly. Yep. Yeah, they have to get rid of the squitter or else if they board wipe, it's, it's over for them, yep. which I love. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right. Well, Tuck, I think you got one more yeast. Why don't you give it to us? Hopefully, you said the first one is boring, which it was, and, boring, and scary. Yes. <laughs> uh, but what's this one? So I have problems with this card, and I have problems with this set, uh, Adventures from the Forgotten Realms, because I think it's stupid that this Planeswalker happens to be a demigod in Forgotten Realms lore. I'll go ahead and drink for that. Uh, D&D Worthos Nerdum. Now she's on the same level as Teferi's and Jace of the World. But I believe in our pro in our preview, not so accurate set review, this was my favorite Planeswalker of the set. And I've been trying to figure out a deck where it would work well. And I think Lolth, Spider Queen, mm. has a lot, lot of value in this deck. So, three colorless, double red for a four loyalty, legendary Planeswalker Lolth. Never see that again. Um, <laughs> who's about $14 and it's a mythic. So... She comes in with four loyalty and has the following stats. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a loyalty counter on Loth. Probably going to be happening quite a bit as you're sacrificing slugs and following these board wipes and that sort of things. Zero, draw a card, you lose a life. So not great, but, you know, whatever. You like drawing cards, right? We've talked about how much we have these synergies in here to do so. Um, minus three, create two, two, one black spider creature tokens with menace and reach. Again, just more blockers, more things. But here's where this gets interesting. We talked about these armies of 1-1s that we're going to be having here. Minus 8, you get an emblem with whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more creatures you control. If that player lost less than 8 life this turn, they lose life equal to the distance. Now, I will fully admit I'm not smart enough to fully understand how that would work in this situation. I, it doesn't. But because if you swing at them with eight slugs, you get with no eight additional. Things. Yeah, you don't get anything additional. Ah, but if you swing at them with four, then you they would do get take four. From there. Yes. Well, so, whatever got through, you get that much plus to plus equal eight. That much things. Okay. Because it's like, or is it? Uh, whenever an opponent dealt damage. Because it says one or more creatures, so that automatically tells oh. you it's looking at the collective life lost. They're always going to lose at least eight. That's how you can think of it. Yep. Gotcha. That's so the minimum you, they can lose each time you hit them with, for combat damage. With each creature? No, total. Or just One period. or more. Yeah. One or more. Okay. Well, it's not quite as good as I thought because I thought like this would be a way that you could end the game because I couldn't understand it. I, I knew I was going to get ripped to shreds for this. But that still being said, you are going to have slugs that are going to be swinging through, right? And that's how you swing out with eight and they actually have blockers. It's like, well, do I want to take the eight or do I just want to take four and take the eight anyways? So for me, I like the fact that you could probably ultimate her – the first time you cast her that turn uh, and just have that lying around with the incidental card draw and the incidental creature tokens. So interesting card. I think it could win some games for you. I like it. It draws cards. There you and go. That's, See? that's the most important thing. And then it makes blockers. And uh, yeah, it works well with sludge or slugs rather because uh, you can sacrifice them and put counters. And uh, the negative eight. I mean, even if it doesn't win the game, like, if you just swing with a, if you get one slug through, that's eight damage. Yeah, and yeah. People only start with forty, so that's not a lot of sluggy swings. So it's like kind of like an anthem for your for your sluggies because they're all yeah. hitting like eight eights essentially. Well, so I like it. And I think usually the way people look at one ones, it's you know it's one of two mindsets. What's the point of me swinging when they're going to kill five of my attackers and only two are going to get through? It's, right, right, at right. least with this, it's like, oh, well, I'm still dealing eight damage, so okay. And then the flip side is a lot of times people won't block because it's like, well, it's just one ones. I don't really care. So it's kind of on I'll both. I'll take two damage, I'll, yeah. Yeah, I'll take two damage. So now it's kind of both sides. It's like you're almost forcing your opponents to want to block, and you're also kind of forcing yourself to want to live in the combat zone a little bit more. So it, it's weird. It's actually more... Of a, if you're gonna ultimate, it's almost forcing both sides of the table to do something oh, that sure. they wouldn't normally do. That's the first point. Second point, um, Tuck, we just talked about this last night with Squee. Did you know that the Lolf Spider Queen with the dragon imprint thing is $175? Oh my God. <laughs> what? Tomer, why are these cards going for so much? With the D and D, those like, are the those are the D and D ampersands, right? Yeah, they got the ampersand on it. Yeah, because like I I think most game stores don't even get it, and the ones that do get it get like two. So mm. it's just like a, a sheer that the supply of it is so low right. that yeah, it's very expensive. They're only getting out to game stores. That's the only way that these things are getting in the rotation. Think Can you open so. them in like collectors boosters? No, I okay. don't think so. 
Well, that's my understanding. I could be wrong, but I remember when I asked my game store, "Are you going to get any?" They're like, "No, we're too small of a, a realtor, so mm. we didn't get, we didn't even get any." And I know, like, fate, like the bigger retailers in Canada do get them, but you have to be like the biggest ones. Yeah. So then I don't know mm. how it is in the states. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, Tomer, what is your final? How the Tox Roll game wins and maybe still retain <laughs> friends at the end of the game? What? No, that's not what I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is the classic that I'm going to just steal from uh, from Krim, the Asian Avenger, uh, on Commander Clash. He likes ending games with the Rise of the Dark Realms. Yeah, he does. And I think it's appropriate oh, sure, here. Yeah. I think every single time we see Rise of the Dark Realms get a little bit salty because it's like, oh, yeah, you just killed me for Rise of the Dark Realms. And that's kind of the, the emotion I'm trying to evoke with this deck is the eye rolling and the upsetness. And uh, this is all the things that Rise of the Dark Realms kind of encapsulates. It's nine mana. <laughs> Well, it's it's seven in double black, nine mana sorcery, put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. The kind of like, yeah, all right, yeah, you got it. Shuffle my cards, right? That's what I <laughs> that want. Sort of reaction. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> I want that. Yes, please. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Rise of the Dark Realms, but I've actually talked about a lot on this channel of how, Tomer, I'm not a big fan of the primordial cycle. Um, because it's so dependent on what your opponents have in their graveyards, and you're only getting one thing. Where I think Rise of the Dark Realms really separates it from, in this example, it's, it's Sepulchrum Primordials, the black one, five colorless, black, black, is basically you're paying two additional mana to get everything back. That yeah. is just, you cannot understate that. And even if your opponents have trash, it's just literally mana dorks from all three, you still get everything from yours. And you well, know, it's, yeah, yeah, and Sorry, uh, you know, for me, nine mana. Even if I just so happen to get all of your mana dorks, and I get all of my good utility stuff, like maybe there's a shieldred in the deck, maybe tox rolls in the graveyard, like that's worth it to me. Versus the sepulchrum, it's like seven mana. I get a six six or a five five. What do you have? Birds of Paradise. Okay. <laughs> what do you have? Oh, it's also a, uh, a you know a sepulchrum or there. It's a legend. Uh, it, it's just I hate it when you get one thing from your opponents. It's so dependent. But this is powerful. And to your point, Mister Combo, there's an argument to be made that this is it's just recasting Toxroll with benefit. Yep. That's all. This, that's what. That's how I read Ooh, this card. Right. right. It's like yeah. even if Toxroll, even if Toxroll is the only thing in your graveyard, you're like. I couldn't possibly care. I at least will be able to snipe stuff from other things that I just killed, right? I am making yeah. a note. We are making Tomer a playtest card. That's what we call proxies. Of it should Rise of the Dark Realms needs an alternate art that's um oh gosh, it's it's like Tox Rolls um return or something yeah it, i was trying to think of like you know tox rolls like dating experiment or i think there's some fun way that it's like <laughs> oh yeah like dabbling in you again seven mana no big deal or here we go tox roll with benefits because that's that's what you said it's literally casting like it. tox roll but you get benefits so we are I making like tomer a tox roll with benefits <laughs> card and I am making note of this because we are designing this and it's going to be very hilarious. Good. Very I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to have our guy do it with like Tox Roll and then we'll have like the MTG goldfish around him like swooning <laughs> up. It's going to be great. It's a, yeah, it's, there. it's like the, it's the two of them at like a table, right? When, like they're both on <laughs> their phone. Oh, God. Yeah. They're doing the Lady of the Tramp and like the spaghetti. Uh... <laughs> great. I love it. Genius. Fantastic. All right. Love it. Well, my final card, people would think this should be a hops, and it can be. It's a modal card. I think it's a game winner, though, for the deck because it's going to put your life total somewhat out of the realm to be hit. The Meat Hook Massacre for X oh, equals God. zero. <laughs> so good. X equals zero. Black, black, legendary enchantment, mythic. When it ETBs, each creature, in my example, will get negative zero, negative zero until end of turn. That, I mean, I guess, you, you know, you could do it if you just needed to get that little extra. But I'm thinking you cast this just for a two beta enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life. In my mind, not so much of your stuff is dying. Now, granted, I guess you probably would run Ashnod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar. You're going to sack slugs to do stuff. So maybe you could drain your opponents. But I'm seeing it more of the whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain a life. To me, this is a game winner because in my mind, especially with the gross stuff that you've come up with, you should 
each player's turn probably gain five to eight life. And that's five to eight blockers that they can no longer kind of deal with. So uh, it's, you know, you're, you're protecting your life total. You're also increasing your life total. And this could almost turn into that Aloro style deck where your life total is 100, right. 110, which is awesome in black because you love to spend life. I love I, it. This, this card's insane. Is it ever going to be less than $30? There's no chance, right? Like, this is the lowest this price is going to be on this card. Probably. It's very good. I mean, it's it's a board wipe. It's a huge life drain swing, and it's a finisher. Like, it's kind of... it's kind of <laughs> The flexibility here is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just imagine, like, you just have, like, a freaking... You have a bunch of uh, slugs or whatever, and you're tired of drawing cards. Your Toxel's <laughs> dead, and, he's a, and everybody's attacking you because Toxel's dead, and they can finally play their creatures. And you're like, "Nah, here's here's Meat Hook Massacre. All your creatures are also dead. Also, you lose a bunch of life. Also, I gain a bunch of life." And I didn't even put it together until Tomer said it, and I reread it. Like, you could absolutely play Meat Hook Massacre for X equals one if you have like thirty slugs, and it's like, "All right, you guys oh, lose." Oh my god, yeah. Three mana, I yeah. win the game. <laughs> Well, yeah, wow. it's very good. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, there's. A... What if you could just blood artist and also kill all your creatures, <laughs> opponents' creatures? Yeah, everything. Just yeah. kill everything on the board. <laughs> good God. Worst case, two mana blood artist, which is the exact same cost as a blood artist, but also yeah. best case is just like they all die. You just win the game. Yeah, all the game. Wow, I really didn't you know, even have any more creatures. Think of that, but... Mr. Combo. If I buy this, do I just windmill slam this into Prosh? Yes. 1,000%. Right? <laughs> and it's actually a better uh, Blood Artist because it's each opponent opposed to target. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's very good. All right, let's wrap up the grossness of this East package because I'm kind of getting nauseous and a little aroused <laughs> at how gross it is. Uh, we're going to head over to the Spice. And, Tomer, we're going to wrap up here with you. Give us your spicy meat to ball. I was told like uh, pet cards. So this one's a card that I'm just, I'm, Wait, a, big, I got I'm a big fan. Brainstorm. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> into the royal into the royal no this kind of works with toxville so we we talked about how like toxville costs a lot of mana yep and sure. it's gonna die because people want to kill it so for one mana you can actually save toxville and if you don't need to save toxville if you need to hit a lane drop is you can play as a land as a sun yeah. <laughs> this is not a spice. This is a immediate windmill slam. People dunk need grain. to people need to know know the good word of Malakir Rebirth, the best <laughs> MDFC of them all. It's so Malakir so Rebirth, good. one black, an instant, two target creature, you lose two life until end of turn that creature gains. When this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its own control. Seven mana is a lot for a tox roll. You don't want to pay nine to recast it, and you know what? Reanimating it costs a little bit of mana too. Guess what? Just pay one mana. When it dies, it comes right back. <laughs> Boom. And if you don't need that, you, you put a land onto the battlefield. You win and you win. That's spice. Was this S tier in your guys's MFDC? Only for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, so I, I've spoken to the Commander Clash crew, and they've, they've slowly warmed up to it being better and better. But I continue to say this is the best MDFC. And I stand by that forever. If I'm playing black and I care about my commander at all, this is immediately going in. It's insanely good. Yeah, the, I think the only issue, though, and I can get where the rest of the Commander Clash crew might not have been as high on it, where it's an S tier. Because they were high on marijuana? Uh, I wasn't going to go that far. I was going to go high on life. Uh, no, it's because oh. it is very situational. You do have to have it in hand, the black available, and your commander dying for it to do anything. Unlike other reanimations where it's like, you could have been dead for eight turns and I'll bring you back. So I can get that. Because, Tuck, we do talk about, like, well, like, even the new uh, uh, counter commander card, if you didn't have... Oh, wash away. Yeah, wash, wash away. away yeah. If you didn't have the ability to just have it counter any spell and it was just counter a spell that someone didn't play from their hand, do you think anyone would play it? Probably not. So... Not near as much. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I think the Malakir Rebirth probably hasn't gotten the publicity because it's you got to have it in hand, the mana open, and your thing has to be dying that you want to bring back. And you didn't already play it for a swamp because you got greedy with your opener. Yes. I mean, if you play it for a swamp, it's, you play it for a land, that's the the, the, yeah. the low end, and that's still pretty decent. Still S tier. Still S tier. I'm with you, Tomer. Still S tier. I'm with you. All right. Well, I hope Tomer gets with me because, you know, mentioned it multiple times today. Uh, I 
watched a lot. I don't think I've ever seen this card played on a Commander Clash. I'm sure it has, so I don't want anyone to roast me because you guys have quite the passionate fans. I always hear the jokes about the uh, comment section. So, here's the kicker. Altar of the Brood. Go with me here. Oh my god. Colorless <laughs> artifact. Here we Whenever go! Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills a card. We have been talking nonstop about all these damn slugs he's going to make. Why the hell wouldn't you put a one-mana Altar of the Brood in the deck to then just make a crap ton of people mill cards? I'm just saying. I hate you. <laughs> but here's the thing. It has a card that it pairs with, so I didn't just do Altar of the Brood to troll you guys. That There is a little bit of synergy No, you just this. did it to troll just me. Correct. Uh, Helm of the Host. Um, I think you need that in here with Tox Oh, my roll. God. <laughs> Four colorless, uh, legendary artifact equipment, rare, thir ah, $13. Uh, equip for five. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. Um, if the equipped creature is legendary, that token gains haste. And I think the important thing to remember is with Toxril, whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug. So both Toxrils are now going to be creating double slugs or triple slugs or quadruple quadruple slugs also doing double triple quadruple slime counters which is just killing your opponent's <laughs> stuff that much quicker and the great thing about tox Roll is that it is an instep trigger it wouldn't be as good if it was like beginning of upkeep you do the slime counter because you got a way to rotation once you equip but once right, you equip right. you're getting it that turn if if people weren't going to kill tox Roll on your like before you could go to combat they probably don't have a way to kill it so you're going to get two Tox Rills, and you're going to get two Slime Counter Triggers, and now negative two on all of your opponent's stuff. So I think these cards together, killing your opponent's stuff quicker, getting more tokens, milling your opponents really fast, you're kind of a pseudo-mill control deck. Mic drop. That's what, that's what Big Tuck thinks about this one. So Alter of the down. Brood is interesting to me because... Because you're also a maniac? <laughs> it can really backfire if you're up against Graveyard decks, Sure. Because you're essentially giving them a big boost to their own self milk yep. plan. So I feel like throwing it in willy nilly is a little bit scary, but if you have a lot of ways to reanimate your opponent's creatures that it becomes really good, like obviously it's very good to rise from the dark realms. Um, and if you're running, you know, animate dead, necromancy, stuff that can reanimate talk re or other stuff. Yeah, reanimate. Stuff that can, can get back talk to and, and but also stuff from the graveyard that it gets way, way better. Um, and I think that's where the direction of the deck is going. So if it is like, because Toxel is expensive, yeah. and we talked about having other expensive creatures like Sir Conrad and stuff. Those are all stuff you kind of want to just spend like two mana putting onto the battlefield instead of card casting, especially Toxel. Toxel's very expensive slug. Yeah, but Alter of the Brood won't help you with that just because it's only opponents. Um... No, but it, it gives you more options. So like if your opponent get something really spicy oh, there, gotcha. like a coma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you mill you mill their best creatures and you're like, hey, what do <laughs> I want here? You know? So or you were saying how much you hate Sepultural Primordial. Oh. Sepultural Primordial is BFFs with Alter of the Brood. I, I want I want that to be on the record. Ugh, I... Those two are, are are best friends forever, as you could say. Um so that could be fun. Well I will say this, Tomer, you are right. If you are just so happy against a pure graveyard deck, Alter of the Brood's not that great. I, I've been burned a couple <laughs> times against a Marin deck in our playgroup. But I will say this, and Tuck, you can confirm, as much as you hate it when I talk about this card, most of the time I'm paying one mana and usually I mill a total of 30 cards for my opponents. And I feel like if there was any card that said pay a mana, make each opponent mill 10 cards, we would probably all run it because it's really, really good. Um, I just think with the incidental, for me, Alter the Brood, I do put it in a lot of decks because it's like I'm playing a land every turn. I'm playing permanents. Like it j I'm going to make you naturally mill. But I think specifically in this deck, you could probably make people mill 20 to 30 at a time. And then if you have that Sir Conrad out, they're taking damage from it. Uh, let's just be even grosser and throw in Mind Crank. So you run Mind Crank in there, and then they're milling with Ultra the Brood, and then Sir Conrad, and then they're Mind Cranking, and then it's just all disgusting. Uh, I want to say we saw a Sir Conrad Mind Crank uh, loop that went 30 cards deep before we had to stop. So um, <laughs> I think it's worth trying it was out. A nightmare. And you got to pick one up before they get too expensive. This used to be a dollar. It's now almost six. There we go. All right. So Tuck. I think you're the last one. It's mine. Are you actually going to be spicy or are you going to be more like mayonnaise? More on the spicy like side. Like spicy mayonnaise. Because I, 
this is a little like spicy or spicy ketchup. If you oh, will. okay. That's, that's pretty spicy. Uh, yeah, there you go. So um, this is a card that Mr. Combo does not like, which is one of the reasons why I want to put it in here. Because I think if you go through and look at all of the creatures that you we've talked about for the most part, you don't really care about their stats. You really only care about their activated abilities. Most of them are mostly like enchantments. Oh, this some card extent, is awful. Some some extent or otherwise, but fresh off the boats from uh, from our pal Innistrad Crimson Vows, Dollhouse of Horrors. So five <laughs> colorless for an artifact, one colorless tap, exile a creature card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a zero zero construct artifact creature in addition to its other types, and it has this creature gets plus one plus one for each construct you control. It gains haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So not only can we start bringing back all the things that we care about very efficiently, like the Sir Conrads of the world and whatnot, this also just gives your commander Embalm 1, kind of <laughs> like Temet, if you will, where you just he dies, you put him in the graveyard, you pay him for once. Okay, great. He goes back to command zone, you pay two there, he dies, he goes back to the graveyard, then you bring him out. If you care that much about playing your commander, this is one of the most efficient ways to get him out. And again, even though he's a big old slug boy himself, I don't see you dealing a ton of damage with him. You really only care about the effects on him. And that's exactly what this card gets you, all for the low price of one mana on your turn. But Tuck, Midnight Banshee would kill the token. What's what Midnight Banshee? The, no, it's on. It's on. It's non-black. Oh, it is non-black. <laughs> But if you have two constructs, there we go. Out, both there alive. we go. Yeah. Tech. You just have to do it twice. I like this card a lot. I I played against it in draft.